Vulcan. Ever heard the name before? For millennia, scientists believed that planets visible to the naked eye, Mars, Venus, Jupiter, Mercury, and Saturn were all there is in our solar system. But in the 19th century, as astronomers began to peer more deeply into our solar system, the discovery of two invisible planets, Neptune and Uranus, led scientists to believe that there was at least one more planet in our solar system orbiting somewhere between the Sun and Mercury. This wonderful new but unseen planet was called Vulcan. Even though no one talks about it today, Vulcan was one of the most controversial and debated topics in the 19th century. Several famous astronomers believed that the planet did exist, but for others, the math wasn't just adding up. How did scientists stumble on this discovery? And if they were so sure it was there, why did they abandon what could have been one of the biggest discoveries of the century? Let's find out. On January 2nd, 1860, renowned French astronomer Urbain Le Verrier announced that he had spotted something moving close to the Sun. Having studied the transit of Mercury in 1845, Le Verrier announced that he had noticed a similar transit, but one of an undiscovered body. Put simply, he noticed that Mercury's orbit gradually shifted as the planet rotated around the Sun. This contradicted the framework of Newtonian classical mechanics. Newton's laws of gravity turned the solar system and the relationship between the celestial bodies within into mathematical interactions. This allowed astronomers like Le Verrier to make predictions about planets, comets, and other objects using well-defined mathematical formulas. If the orbit of a planet or moon didn't fall in line with Newton's laws of gravity, then it was almost certain that there must be something else exerting additional gravity on the system. So, Le Verrier suggested that there could be another planet between the Sun and Mercury, which, by its attraction, changes Mercury's orbit. He did the math and was able to add a planet between the Sun and Mercury so that Newton's laws could work properly. This meant that there were nine planets in our solar system, and the man who made that discovery would have his name written in the history books till the end of time. So, once Le Verrier made the announcement, it received massive attention across the science community. The only problem was there was no definite evidence to prove this discovery. If the findings were made by an amateur astronomer, his claims would have been dismissed without a second thought. But this wasn't just your average astronomer. It was Le Verrier, the same man who proved the existence of Neptune with only mathematical calculations. And in all fairness, he wasn't the only one who believed such a planet existed. In 1601, German astronomer Christoph Scheiner claimed to have noticed a strange black object moving in front of the Sun and claimed that it could only be a planet. Other astronomers like Franz von Groit Huisson, Capel Loft, and J.W. Pastorf also claimed to have noticed this strange planet. An American observer, Richard Covington, also said he had seen a well-defined black spot progressing across the Sun. It was hard to tell who was right and who was wrong. At the time, there was very little reason to doubt the discovery, since it fell in line with the prevailing views of the universe provided by Newton's laws. With such contradictory views flying about, scientists decided that it was time to give it a name. In 1846, French astronomer Jacques Babinet suggested that it should be called Vulcan, after the Roman god of smiths and volcanoes. It was a fitting name after all. Any planet closer to the sun than Mercury was going to be incredibly hot. The amount of mass needed to create the wobble Le Verrier noticed would be nearly equal to Mercury itself. If there was a planet there, it would be roughly the same size as Mercury, and there was almost no way that a planet that big could be missed, yet there were no sightings of it. Hey, spacers, finding it hard to believe that Vulcan exists. Well, there are other planets in our universe that defy expectation, and some are much closer to us than you realize. So, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and prepare to have your mind blown away. The universe is big, and there is so much we haven't seen yet. Le Verrier himself 
had never seen the planet directly, but what made him so certain about its existence was the way he came about it. Long before he discovered Neptune, Le Verrier had been given a task by the director of the Paris Observatory, Francois Arago, to determine the orbit of Mercury using Newton's laws of physics. Le Verrier did so, and his predictions about Mercury's orbit were tested during a transit of Mercury across the surface of the Sun to see how well it matched up. But it didn't. Le Verrier went back to it again, and in 1859 he published a more thorough theory on Mercury's orbit. This time he used multiple sightings of Mercury as his baseline, but once again his predictions were wrong. Not by much, though. What was observed exceeded Le Verrier's prediction by 43 arc seconds per century. This meant that any difference between the motion he predicted and what was observed was likely caused by the influence of an unknown factor. Confident in the work he had done, Le Verrier was convinced that something weird was going on. At first, he never claimed definitively that it was a planet disturbing the orbit of Mercury. He thought that an asteroid belt, or maybe even a series of small planets, planets were responsible for this, but later settled on the idea of Vulcan, using the same mathematical formulas he used to discover Mercury and the transit provided by another astronomer, Edmond Lescarbault, who claimed to have seen the transit of Vulcan. Le Verrier calculated Vulcan's orbit. He predicted that it revolved around the Sun in a nearly circular orbit at a distance of about 13 million miles, or 0.14 astronomical units. Mercury has the most excess orbit out of any planet in our solar system, yet its closest approach to the Sun puts it at about 28.5 million miles. This meant that Vulcan was just under half the distance from the Sun as Mercury's closest approach. Le Verrier also calculated that it took 19 days and 17 hours for Vulcan to revolve around the Sun with an orbital inclination of about 12 degrees and 10 minutes relative to the ecliptic. Vulcan's further the most elongation from the Sun was at 8 degrees. This meant that the planet was not far enough from the Sun to escape its glare, making it difficult to see even at twilight. So, the only hope anyone had of ever seeing this mysterious planet was during an eclipse or a transit around the Sun. But Le Verrier was determined to prove his discovery anyway. He took several stabs at predicting the transit of Vulcan and frequently announced dates of future Vulcan transits. Now and then, a few reports would come in from people claiming to have seen a transit of Vulcan and Verrier would tinker with the orbital parameters once more, hoping to predict a transit that could prove once and for all that Vulcan existed. But nothing came of it. Soon, other scientists started dismissing his prediction that there was no such planet in our solar system. One prominent figure who stood against the idea of Vulcan was eminent, French astronomer Emmanuel Lies. Emmanuel, who was working for the Brazilian government at the time, claimed to have been studying the surface of the Sun at the same time as Lexabo when he spotted the mysterious transit, but with a much more powerful telescope. And he was in a position to deny the passage of any such planet at the time. Le Verrier passed away in 1877, unable to ever prove the existence of Vulcan. Yet, the sightings didn't stop. Just a year after he passed on, two experienced astronomers, Professor James Craig Watson and Lewis Swift, both claimed to have seen a Vulcan-like planet close to the Sun during a solar eclipse. They even both claimed that it had a reddish color and Watson was confident that it had a definite disk unlike stars. But the final nail in Vulcan's empty coffin came from Albert Einstein, who began developing his theory of general relativity with Vulcan very much at the front of his mind. The laws of general relativity were able to explain the wobble in Mercury's orbit without needing to rely on Vulcan and completely obliterated the hypothetical planet. So, 40 years after Le Verrier claimed to have seen it, the idea of Vulcan was finally put to rest, never to be brought up in the scientific community again.
Can a planet like Vulcan be hiding in our solar system? Will we prove a sighting of Vulcan? Hey spacers, share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to check out other videos as we continue to explore the depths of the universe. If you're loving our content, please subscribe and click the bell to be notified of new and awesome space videos. Thank you for spacing out with us and see you next video.